Charles fumbled around for his bear spray, which was attached to his belt. He discharged the spray as the bear ran at him, but it was too late. The bear launched itself at Charles, and he was flattened into the ground. Charles tried to protect the back of his neck as he lay face down, but the bear was fierce and powerful. April 15, 2021, Yellowstone National Park. Famed for its hot springs and geysers, this park is home to an abundance of wildlife. Wild bison roam the open grasslands, eagles soar the skies, and wolves and bears live in the extensive forests and woodlands. Charles Mock was a regular to this incredible landscape. Yellowstone and the surrounding wilderness were his playgrounds. He was an adventurer and an outdoor enthusiast. Charles was originally from Pocatello, Idaho, but was now living in Montana. He was a guide in Yellowstone National Park and took visitors out into the wilds to experience some of the very best wildlife America has to offer. He worked for Backcountry Adventures, running snowmobile tours. In April 2021, Charles was enjoying a few days off. He headed to one of his favorite fishing spots along the Madison River. Springtime on the Madison offers some of the best fishing around. He was familiar with the location and knew it like the back of his hand. He often kayaked the waters or rode his motorcycle through Yellowstone. He was also well aware of the presence of grizzly bears in the region. His job was to find these incredible animals for the tourists who had paid to see them. Although the sun was out, there was a chill in the air as Charles walked along the river's edge. A thick layer of snow covered the ground making his progress slow. But Charles was in no hurry. The snow crunched under each footstep. He scanned the woodland before settling down to fish. He unpacked his bag and rod. The cathartic motion of casting his rod in and out of the river on April 15th was just what Charles needed to relax and unwind. It wasn't long before Charles heard something nearby. He glanced around, nothing there. Then he heard it again. He lay his rod down carefully and stood up. Taking a few steps along the river, he froze. Less than 50 yards away, there was a grizzly bear tucking into a moose carcass. Immediately, it looked up and spotted Charles. It lumbered over towards him. Charles fumbled around for his bear spray, which was attached to his belt. He discharged the spray as the bear ran at him, but it was too late. The bear launched itself at Charles, and he was flattened into the ground. Charles tried to protect the back of his neck as he lay face down, but the bear was fierce and powerful. Weighing 420 pounds, the grizzly bear wasn't one of the largest in the area, but its huge body, four-inch claws, and two-inch canines are certainly no match for any human. The bear mauled Charles's face and scalp. He screamed and tried desperately to fight the bear off. Mercifully, the bear stopped its attack and ran off. Maybe it was spooked by Charles's loud cries or his ability to fight back. Maybe the bear spray took effect. We will never know. Charles lay there, bloodied and gasping. The adrenaline from the attack was wearing off, and the pain was agonizing. He rolled over onto his back and looked up at the sky. The sun was glinting through the trees. A gentle breeze filled the air as he lay on the cold, hard snow. He felt the cold creep into his body, and he knew he needed urgent help. Hardly able to move, Charles pulled his mobile phone out of his pocket. Steadying his shaky hand, he dialed 911 at 3.45 p.m. To his immense relief, Charles heard the operator on the other end of the phone. Giving them his approximate position, all he had to do now was wait. He was worried that the bear would come back to finish him off. He knew that it had probably been protecting its moose carcass and saw Charles as a threat. Grizzly bears begin to emerge from hibernation during the spring season. Having spent five or six months without food, grizzly bears wake up very, very hungry. In fact, Yellowstone National Park rangers close sections of the park and certain trails to avoid grizzly encounters. The bears tend to head towards low elevations, south-facing slopes, and thermal areas in the hunt for ungulate carcasses. They are looking for an easy meal. Charles was holding on to life. He was in a remote area of Yellowstone. It had taken him some time to get to the particular fishing spot, and he knew emergency vehicles wouldn't be able to reach him. As time passed, 
He drifted in and out of consciousness. Coldness enveloped him, and he knew this was the end. Almost an hour after his 911 call, Charles was jolted awake by the sound of people nearby. He shouted out. His rescuers had arrived. They were dragging a toboggan behind them and knelt down beside Charles. Charles was lying in a circle of red-tainted snow, barely breathing, barely alive. He was hauled onto the toboggan and carried away from the river. The going was tough, but they eventually made it to a trail where a snowmobile was waiting for them. The rescue team transferred Charles to the snowmobile, which sped off down the snow-covered track. Eventually, they made it to an ambulance and onwards to a hospital in the city of Idaho Falls. Charles was rushed into surgery where extensive work was done to his face and scalp. He underwent two successful surgeries. The medical team was pleased with the success of the surgery and thought that Charles was on the long road to recovery. Two days later, however, Charles suffered a massive stroke in the hospital and tragically died. It was a shock to the doctors and a huge shock to his friends. He had been such a fit and adventurous young man with a great amount of respect and knowledge for the wilderness and its wildlife. His friend described him as the best guide around with sight like an eagle and hearing like an owl. Wildlife investigators and personnel from the county sheriff's office and local police department returned to the scene of the attack the next day. The grizzly bear was still there. It stalked the team and made bluff charges. Investigators think that the bear was aggressively guarding the moose kill, perhaps having been attacked by another bear. The 20-year-old bear finally charged the team. Several people fired at it, and it died about 20 yards from them. There are about 700 bears in the region, and although attacks on people are relatively rare, there have been eight fatalities since 2010. In 1975, the bears became protected under the Endangered Species Act. Since then, there has been an increase in their population numbers. At the same time, there has been a rise in the number of humans in the area as well. Charles, who lived and worked in the area, had encountered bears many times before. He had never had a problem with them and knew what to do in the event of an attack. Without any witnesses, it's difficult to know where Charles went wrong. Perhaps he didn't do anything wrong and was simply in the wrong place at the wrong time. Going into bear country during the season in which bears emerge from hibernation is probably one of the riskiest times. The bears are hungry and opportunistic, as we have seen in this case. They are also very protective of any food that they do find. Visitors to the area are told to keep bear spray on them. We don't know whether Charles's bear spray was deployed before or during the attack. Remnants of the spray were found on his clothing. Perhaps the smell of the spray prevented the bear from killing Charles outright, or perhaps he used it too late. There is a debate as to the effectiveness of bear spray, but it is still recommended by guides in the area keeping food away from campsites and remaining vigilant in bear country is some of the best advice given to outdoor enthusiasts who enjoy the wilderness. Of course, you can end up doing everything right, but encounters with bears can still take you by surprise. Charles was one of the most knowledgeable and experienced people in the area, and yet he was tragically taken by one of the animals he most admired.